Uh, tell us you're sitting there in the uh, in the summer on your time off. You just get up in the morning for a cup of tea and a slice of toast and pick up the papers and find out that you've just signed two World Cup winners in Ozzy Ardides and, and Ricky Villa. I mean, that caught the world by the, by surprise, didn't it, when Birkenshaw disappeared to Buenos Aires on the word of Harry Haslam and his coach? Yeah, apparently the big man that helped it all uh, go smoothly out there was uh, Rattan. Rattan being the man who um, famously, Alf Ramsey, went on the pitch 66 with someone was going to swap shirts with him. And because Alf Ramsey thought, Alf Ramsey called them the animals, didn't he, that Argentina team? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was the sort of biggest culprit of it, probably captain, but I'm not quite sure about that. And um, But Rattan was, was, was a sort of a go-between. And um, Keith said he was the nicest man he'd ever met and helped it go smoothly. And Ozzy owned up to me the other day that Keith was very clever. And I said, so why was that? He said, because he never told me or Ricky that the team had just got promoted back into the top league. So I said, so what difference would that have made? He said, well, I wouldn't have signed. <laughs> so so <laughs> Keith, Keith was very clever. Number one, keeping it quiet, even from me. And in that spell, we, Keith and I would be on the phone for at least an hour every Sunday talking about the game and the performance and the training or what we needed or what we didn't need and what we should keep going and uh, he did not confide in me as per this signing therefore it was such a surprise when I picked the, the paper up that famous morning and saw the headline that we'd scooped the world with our dealers I, I knew all about our dealers from watching the World Cup I didn't know so much about Ricky Villa but uh, soon was going to know about him. Keith is is a is a, similar to Bill Nick. is a dour Yorkshireman. Believes in certain things and uh, manners of doing things, and uh, you know he's not so flamboyant as other managers of that era. What was the mood though when you kicked off that season, and you've had all of the press and the build up, and the first home game. You get beat 4-1 by Villa. And then a couple of weeks later, it was up to Anfield and you were beaten 7-0, that infamous game there. I always remember, by the way, Jerry Armstrong telling me a story about that game. He said, we were 6-0 down. He said, and I'd had a ruck with Burke and Shaw. He said, and Burke, he turned to me and said, uh, Jerry, uh, time for you to go on. He said, and I looked at him, I said, Keith, you can go and <laughs> do <laughs> one. <laughs> but, yeah. you know... You, you had all those positive headlines and then almost immediately this dose of reality. Names, names don't win games. That was proven. We were, Ozzy says, this might be harsh from Ozzy's point of view, that when he signed for Spurs, him and Ricky joined us in a, in a sports camp in Holland. He said, and after two days, we decided that this team has only got two players, Perryman, the captain, and Hoddle, and the rest are sort of average. Well, he might have seen them from a sort of, maybe a negative point of view as per, of course we'd had the confidence building of getting to a new division, but perhaps they were all fearful of their places because now surely the club is gonna sign some new players, including these Argentinians, um, to make us good enough to compete be, be competitive in, in the top division. Remember we had the 1-1 draw at Champions Forest. Spurs supporters went up in their hordes uh, to support us. We're back in the big league and Ricky scores the goal that gets us the 1-1 draw. So guess what? All this hope and anticipation is now added to because we've in those days with two points for a win, you go away and get a draw you're, you're, you're on course. And we, we did it at Brian Clough's Forest, which is not an easy thing to do. So, of course, we come home and the, the fanfare is now, is now stronger. And, um, of course, we got brought very much down to earth with a bang, with a 4-1 defeat by Villa. And, uh, as you say, then we go to Anfield and lose seven. And team that's going to find your weaknesses or whether you're equipped yet to, to be competitive in the top league would be Liverpool. They sort of, well, they ripped us apart. When one of the goals they scored, I think it was the last one, probably Jerry Armstrong's fault, was, um, <laughs> was uh, you know, us having a corner and then breaking and about three passes later, uh, McDermott scoring on the far post. Hell of a goal. So it really was welcome back to the top league and welcome to English football for our dealers and Villa. 
and welcome back to reality for this team that had got promoted out of Division 2 by playing good football and you think that's going to take you into the top league just playing that football and, and not defending good enough etc etc so um, it, w it was a wake up call for us all and it's obvious that um, these two new players had to be integrated into the team for instance they would get in positions where you, an English player would be crossing the ball and the typical English forward would be making a run across the near post or pulling out for the back post or whatever. And Ozzy and Ricky were not crossing the ball. So it's obvious until you work those things out, who's, who's going to adapt to who? And um, it probably took, say, a year, but it was probably more than a year for us all to sort of integrate together uh, off the field and on the field and be on the same page, which any team that's going to be successful needs to be so um you know i started to speak before about keith um lack of being a flamboyant manager by any means in his, in his clothes he wore or, or how he spoke to the press or whatever he didn't make any big big calls or or promises but uh, this man ended up putting together such a team full of flair yet could defend and it was off the back of those two signings from Argentina and the problems that we took on board because of it that Keith was shown the way of what he needed to do and he needed to, to go and buy some strikers and to tighten up at the back and you know that wasn't all big money signings yes Archibald and Crooks very good partnership with goals in them but also the emergence of Glenn Hoddle and therefore what type of players were needed at the front and the way that Glenn was going to marry up with, with Ricky and Glenn uh, and Ozzy in midfield etc because there weren't too much defensiveness in there especially from Ricky and, and Glenn Hoddle Ozzy was a, a, a buzzy player worker that would always do his, more than his fair share but Galvin and Roberts for instance from non-league so it was, a, it was a combination of all these things together, plus the homegrown part of it, which was me, Miller, Chrissy Hewton, uh, Falco was part of that squad, for instance. So, so there was an element of everything. World-class players, Glenn Hoddle, of course, uh, homegrown. So the World Cup stars, plus the homegrowns, plus the non-leaguers coming in very hungry, plus the two bits of quality in the front. And that team went on to do really good things.